Hello, everyone. Welcome to Good Morning America Health. I'm your host, Tanya Rivero. Two of the most popular cosmetic procedures in the U.S. are liposuction and breast augmentation. Now there's a procedure that combines the two, and it may someday prove to have greater medical value than the cosmetic benefit it now provides. It's a procedure in which fat is harvested from trouble spots in the body and injected into the breast. And joining me from Orlando to discuss it is plastic surgeon Dr. Roger Basson. Dr. Basson, welcome back. It's great to see you again. It's great to be here. Thank you very much. So first, if you will, tell us how this works. The last time you were on the show here in New York, you demonstrated the aqua lipo technique. And it's my understanding that you use that now as part of this two-step process. Yeah, absolutely. What, what we're able to do now is we're able to take what, the, the fat that we remove using the aqua lipo technique is much better quality fat than any other type of procedure we've ever used before in terms of the fat removal. So being that we have a much higher quality fat, we can use this to transplant it into other areas of the body and what the latest and greatest craze is going to be is using it for natural breast enhancement and we call this procedure natural fill. And this is a procedure that's only been available in the U.S. for about, what, six or seven months? Yeah, th this is a procedure that, that recently has, the, the to take a historical look on it, the American Society of Plastic Surgery actually had a ban on taking fat from one part of the body and putting it into other areas of the body, particularly the breast, because of uh, the, the concern with mm -hmm. imaging studies that it might trip up an in imaging study and think that there might be a precancerous lesion. Right. But now, due to the most recent clinical evidence, we are now, in the last six to eight months, this ban has been lifted, and now we are kind of uh, pursuing this, and uh, it's, it's been proven to be very exciting, very successful. And clear up for us, if you will, the role that stem cells play in this. I know that uh, there's some research that's still a little premature, but is there a possibility that this procedure could help women who've had a mastectomy? Well, yes, this is definitely a, a procedure that can help women that have had mastectomy. Patients who have had lumpectomy or have had a little portion of their uh, breast removed, their breast tissue removed, we're still trying to get better evidence on that in terms of uh, transplanting the fat because we don't want to reactivate any uh, previous breast cancer, although there is no evidence scientifically that proves that, we're still trying to do this the, the most prudent way. Now in terms of the stem cells, science has definitively proven that stem cells are in the greatest above abundance and believe it or not, our own fat. So. Whereas we previously thought the greatest concentration of stem cells was in our bone marrow, we're finding that there's three to 500 times the concentration of stem cells in our own fat. So now that we're removing the fat and not traumatizing it with our aqua lipo procedure, we're finding that it's not traumatizing the stem cells either. So when we transplant the fat, not only are we getting the stem cells that can help to reactivate the new blood vessel growth, but there's also some uh, postulation that these stem cells might actually might actually themselves turn into more uh, fatty tissue, which is what we want in the breast, because that's what the breast is composed of. Sure, so aside from this procedure, there's the possibility that these stem cells could lead to all kinds of other benefits. We don't know. We have to see where the science is going there. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, the U.S. is about five to ten years behind what is going on overseas, because mm -hmm. overseas they're taking the fat, they're harvesting the stem cells or spinning the stem cells out of the fat, culturing the stem cells, and using the stem cells for many of different conditions. The one that, it, that, that jumps to the top of my head is they are using the stem cells and injecting it into patients who have had heart attacks, which really is dead heart tissue injecting those stem cells into the, into the heart tissue and it is regenerating brand new heart tissue. So this has incredible promise in the future uh, in, uh, in medicine in general. So, absolutely. so patients it's will be able to actually have their stem cells removed and, and bank it for possible further use. It's fascinating and we will definitely see where the science goes there. Let's go back to the, the breast augmentation procedure. Who is a good candidate for this? And tell us what the results look like. I'm curious because with a with a traditional breast augmentation, I would imagine that the shape of the breast is a lot easier to control. Here there's a little bit more skill involved, right? Well, absolutely. There's definitely a technical as uh, aspect of it, and myself and my team of plastic surgeons really are very technically advanced in terms of how we uh, how we use this fat. But you would you would think that it's harder to shape it and to give the breast the, the type of uh, the type of shape we're looking for 
compared to the traditional style augmentation, and, and that's not correct. We're able to actually shape it and, and do a better job in terms of giving the right shape and trying to put the volume back where we want to put the volume with this procedure versus the older procedures. Now, what if you are a little too thin, let's say, and you don't have enough excess fat to lipo in place in the breasts? That person could not get this procedure done? Yeah, that's a great question. For, for patients who are thin, um, or really for any patient, we're really limited as to, as to how much fat we can take out with the aqua lipo procedure in terms of how much volume we can put back into the breast. What, uh, what we typically tell our patients is that if you're too skinny and we need to build up some fat cells or enlarge your fat cells, well, I'll tell my patients to literally go on a cupcake diet <laughs> or eat a lot of cake. Who wouldn't want to hear that? Okay, finally, we don't have a lot of time. How much does it cost, roughly? Well, it, typically you're running somewhere between six and $12,000, depending on how many body areas we have to use to harvest the fat from. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you so much, Dr. Roger Basson. Thank you. Fascinating. And for more health news and information that's good to know, check us out on the health page at abcnews.com.